What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are continuing schedule preview and predictions. I should say team preview and predictions for the 2021 college football season. And today, we're going to be talking about the TCU Horned Frogs, a team last year that, well, had a pretty rare season statistically, right? Missed the top 25 poll last year. Um, can they get back there this year? They're definitely going to be in the conversation, but how good will TCU be in 2021? That's what you're here to find out, right? You're here to find out what I think. Hey, if you are a TCU fan and you do end up enjoying this video, leave a like, push the video out to more TCU fans like you. Also hit that subscribe button down below, especially if you're a TCU fan, might be talking about you in the season. Uh, who knows? Again, I'm still trying to figure out how I want to recap games or preview games in the regular season. So if you guys have some ideas, please let me know down in the comment section below. Um, hey, continue to grow the channel. Subscribe, share, do anything you can. I want to try to get to 300 before the season starts. We're pretty darn close because the channel's grown really fast as of late. So thank you guys for that. Uh, and of course, you can leave comments down below. Just, of course, be mindful of what you say. Be nice to everyone. Tell me what you think TCU is going to do in 2021. Without further ado, here's my preview and prediction. So looking back to last year, of course, they missed the top 25 poll. And I believe I had heard and or read somewhere that that was the first time TCU missed top 25 poll in quite a long time, which just shows you not really that it was a down season for TCU, although some fans might view it as that way. Uh, I feel like TCU was a solid team last year, um, and we'll look at the record here in a bit. Uh, looking at what they lost last year, Darwin Barlow at running back. Now, that's not a huge loss, in my opinion. Uh, yes, you have to acknowledge it because it was still a solid running back. Um, might have even been their leading rusher. Again, not quite sure. Um, but Darlin Barlow, pretty solid loss there for TCU. I don't think it's as big of a loss as some people may think, though. These two guys right here are some big losses. Pro Wells, Artavius Land. Now, they weren't, like, leading receivers or anything because they were tight ends, of course. But, however, these two guys were still some pretty solid receivers for their tight end positions. Both of them are now with teams in the NFL. Uh, and Max Dugan, Max Duggan, however you want to say that, it pronounced both ways. I'll probably end up saying both throughout this video. Uh, but for both of those tight ends, they were really solid options. Now, again, they might not be as big of losses as some people might think because of the wide receiver group that TCU has coming back. And we'll look at that here in a little bit. Lots of guys transferring out on the offensive line, but the one that's most notable to me is TJ Stormont. Now, they do have some transfers coming in as well. There aren't any on my list, though, when you see players returning slash coming in. But TJ Stormont, to me, was the biggest loss out of the guys that transferred out. On defense, you got some big losses as well. Garrett Wallow, Ben Wilson, Trevon Morig, and our Darius Washington, along with other names you could throw up there as well. But Wallow and Morig, I see as those two biggest losses. Wallow, I believe, was a leading tackler. If not, it was Wilson, but it was one of the two. And then Morig, of course, with his NFL-level talent. Uh, there are other NFL-level talent guys in there, but Morig was a really highly rated prospect. So we know it's not about what you lost. It's about what you have. So looking at what TCU does have, I think even with the defensive losses, they still have a really solid defense. Guys like O'Shawn Mathis, Kari Coleman, D. Winters, C.J. Caesar, and LeKendrick Van Zant, among others. Again, I'm sorry if I pronounced any names incorrectly, uh, but... Those guys still going to make up a really solid defensive group. Gary Patterson usually has a pretty solid defense. It's the offense that I really want to highlight for this TCU team. We know the defense should at least be somewhat solid this year, right? Should be. It was pretty solid last year. Should continue to do the same thing again. Might even improve from where it was last year. I don't think it's going to take a huge drop off, maybe a tiny step back, but even that I doubt. But when you look at the offense now, Max Dugan, I've said his name already. He's shown flashes, right? We know that he can be a solid option at quarterback. We've seen him play really, really well. Is he hasn't been able to do that consistently. So if he can do that consistently, Max Dugan can really help drive this offense, especially when you look at the wide receiver group he has. Tay Barber, Quentin Johnson, Darius Davis, all coming back, all played a prominent role. But the one guy I did want to highlight is J.D. Spielman. Now we'll get to Zach Evans in a bit, but J.D. Spielman was a transfer over from Nebraska last year as a guy who watches uh, of course, a lot of Ohio State football. I, I'm very familiar with the Big Ten, as I am with a lot of teams around the nation, but uh, especially in the Big Ten and when you looked at Nebraska that year. I mean, J.D. Spielman had a prominent role, then transferred over to TCU and didn't really have that prominent of a role. 
it, it was kind of weird to me that you weren't seeing J.D. Spielman's name get called. So you would figure he has a bigger role in the offense this year, I would think at least. Um, but of course, with the way Barbara Johnson Davis have been playing, might not happen. Uh, J.D. Spielman is a guy that you have to play in a big role to have some success. And you saw that last year. And now with Zach Evans at running back, uh, Darwin Barlow, of course, you have to acknowledge it. It's a loss. Uh, but for Zach Evans, it's their only five-star recruit to this date. Uh, so for Zach Evans, I think he can have a pretty big year um, uh, behind the passing attack for TCU. Again, the offensive line, got to get some things sorted out there, but I think it's, uh, it's going to be pre uh, pretty all right. It might struggle a little bit at times, but uh, overall, I think this TCU team can be really, really good. Here's the schedule for TCU. Six and four uh, is or was their record last year. Five and four in the Big 12 landed them fifth in the Big 12 conference. Now, when I talked about Arkansas earlier, I said they didn't play in the bowl game. Well, they were scheduled to the Mercari Bowl, but it ended up getting canceled, of course, due to COVID concerns. Same thing happened with TCU. Hey, there's the schedule for TCU. Uh, I'm talking about some games more than others because they are more interesting matchups to me. So if the day gets highlighted in green, it's a win. If it gets highlighted in red, it's a loss. And we're going to start out no better place to start right in the first game of the season. And yeah, it should be an easy win here for TCU. Uh, playing Duke Hens, it should be a nice little tune-up game. Figure out what's working, figure out what's not. Uh, maybe try some guys in different positions, things like that. You, you, you know, the, the classic tune-up game. TCU should win this game, whether they play good, bad, anywhere in between. Uh, and, and then a home game against Cal. So of course, the, these two teams were scheduled to play last year. Uh, didn't happen because of uh, 2020 being the COVID year. So coming into this year, they will play at TCU. So uh, for this game, Cal is always a team that's usually is gonna fight. They're usually a team that's, you, you, you know what you kinda, you kinda know what to expect from Cal, right? They're gonna fight, they're gonna hit hard, they're gonna play hard, they're gonna give it their all every single game. And I think Cal can keep this one pretty close. Uh, but this year, especially when looking at Cal, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the Golden Bears this year. Last year, I thought they could be a pretty solid team. This year, I'm not quite sure what to think about Cal. I, I think Cal can go in both directions. I think they can be pretty good. I also think they can be pretty awful. Uh, I also think they can be somewhere in between. Cal's an interesting team to me. I do think they're going to be able to keep this one close for a little bit. Uh, but in the end, I do see TCU pulling out this win here. Uh, with the balance attack they should have on the offensive side, uh, just with the players that they have, of course, right? Uh, and then on the defensive side, hey, you got some really solid uh, defensive players back there as well. So I think TCU ends up winning this game. And then the bye week. So this is the worst place for a bye week, period, end of story. Especially when you play in a conference like the Big 12 where everyone has to play everyone and there's no relying on other teams to lose or win or do anything like that. No, you control your own destiny in the Big 12. And this is a horrible, play, horrible, horrible place for a bye week because you have it right before a rivalry game, which, okay, yes, you can prepare for the rivalry game, but then you have to play nine straight Big 12 opponents. That's kind of brutal. Speaking of the rivalry game, it is against SMU. So the battle for the Iron Skillet. Uh, now, when you remember a couple of years ago, SMU was pretty good. And last year they were solid. Uh, but this year, I'm not quite sure what to think about SMU either. So TCU, really interesting non-conference here. I'm not quite sure what to think about Cal or SMU. They should beat uh, Duke Hentz. I think at most TCU loses one of those, but I have them winning all three. So I think TCU walks away with the iron skillet again this year. I think this TCU team, uh, of course, if they can gel together, um, they can be really, really good. So I do have TCU winning that game. Before a home game against Texas, so this marks the fourth straight home game for TCU. Uh, and you know the fans are going to be loud in this one. It's the first Big 12 game uh, at TCU with a full capacity stadium uh, in almost two years. So th th this is uh, really going to be a special game here. Uh, and I think for both sides, because for Texas, hey, you might be looking ahead to that game in Dallas against Oklahoma. Possibly you might. Um, and I think, that, I, I think this is the loss that Texas shouldn't have. So we know Steve Sarkeesian coming in. We know how good of an offensive-minded coach he is. Just look at some of the offenses he coached uh, at Alabama. I think this is the game that Texas loses to a, quote, team they're not supposed to. Yes, I put that in quotes because really TCU is going to be a solid team this year. And I could absolutely 
see TCU winning this game. In fact, I mean, you see it, right? I have them winning the game. I, I, I could see TCU winning this game pretty handedly, too. I mean, the TCU plays well. Don't really know what to expect from Texas this year in all capacities. I had Texas at 8-4. and four. TCU could have a very similar situation. This could also be a game where the winner has a really good season and the loser doesn't. Uh, that, this could be one of those games. I think it's going to be pretty close, uh, but I do have TCU pulling that one out in the end. Road game against Texas Tech. So Tyler Shuck coming in at quarterback, transfer over from Oregon. I think Texas Tech can be solid this year, but it is the defense that worries you about Texas Tech, right? It, it really is. Now, Sir Roderick Thompson, a running back that doesn't get talked about enough, I do still have TCU winning the game because it is that defense, right? And when you compare the two defenses on paper, it looks like a mismatch in favor of TCU. And uh, I think you can say that way when you look up at the offenses too. I think TCU all around a better football team. I think they're going to be able to get this win. Now they might be looking ahead to this next game against Norman, uh, trying to prepare for that, in which case maybe they could drop that one. Hey, it is on the road. Uh, home field advantage should play a bigger role than ever. Now, speaking of the game at Norman, yeah, sorry, TCU fans, I do have you dropping that one. So that's your first loss of the season. I just can't see you coming away with that one, especially how good Oklahoma has looked. Um, I, I, I have the Horned Frogs dropping that one. So now they fall to five and one. And I think they're going to fall to five and two here with this game against West Virginia. West Virginia team last year, kind of in a similar situation as TCU, right? In my opinion, these two teams are pretty similar. Offenses have potential, but haven't quite figured it out yet. On the defense sides, you know what you're going to get. TCU maybe has a little more questions on defense than West Virginia. Um, but when you look at West Virginia's defense, it was one of the best in the Big 12, and if not the entire nation, statistically, analytically, however you want to look at it. I think that continues this year, and I think West Virginia beats TCU on the road. And now a road game against Kansas State. So quarterback coming back for Kansas State. He's okay when, you know, when he plays at his best. But the running back, Deuce Vaughn, that's the name you got to get to know for Kansas State. However, all around, Kansas State is not the greatest team. In fact, they might be the second worst team in the Big 12. I have TCU uh, winning that game against Kansas State. And then a home game against Baylor. So Baylor, I've seen as a team that has been underrated, which I think they are. But I don't think they're as underrated as some people are making them out to be. So I think they're one of those overrated, underrated teams, if that makes sense. I know oxymorons can be confusing. But uh, when you look at Baylor this year, they got to replace Charlie Brewer. That's not going to be an easy thing to do, especially with how good Charlie Brewer can play. We saw that in 2019. John Lovett leaving Baylor as well. That's not going to be an easy spot to fill either, although Baylor's got some pieces back there. So overall for Baylor, you got to fill in a lot of pieces. Now, I know last year was kind of a disaster with new coaching staff, new players, all of that good stuff. For, for this year, I see Baylor getting a little bit better. I just don't know how much better it's going to be. So I do have TCU winning this football game here uh, to improve them to 7-2 and two on the season. Or excuse me. Uh, yeah, 7-2 and two on the season. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, then a road game against Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma State is a hard team to figure out. Uh, of course, Spencer Sanders coming back at quarterback. And I do have Tylen Wallace, Chuba Hubbard gone, um, along with Tevin Jenkins on the offensive side. Defensive side, you got a couple guys leaving as well. And for Oklahoma State, the, I think it's going to be quite an up and down season uh, for uh, Oklahoma State. But again, home field advantage, right? It's going to play a huge role in games this year. I see it playing a huge role here in this game. I think Oklahoma State, by this point late in the season, have gotten a lot of things figured out. I think they get the ball rolling. Uh, their offense is clicking, and I think they get the win against the TCU Horned Frogs. TCU's beating Kansas. I don't have Kansas winning a game in the Big 12 this year. Neither should you. Um, so, win against Kansas. Then a road game against Iowa State. So, this is a Friday game, and Iowa State is just too good. It's much like that Oklahoma game there. I I Iowa State's too good. They got one of the most improving offenses in the country. I think can be one of the best offenses in the country, especially with an improving defense, one of the most improved defenses in the country. I think Iowa State's going to be really, really good this year. Now, Iowa State could be pretty tired coming off their game against Oklahoma just the previous week, maybe even looking ahead to the Big 12 championship game where 
if they make it, they'd have to play Oklahoma again. But again, it's still going to be played in Jack Tri Stadium. I don't see TCU pulling this one out. So with that, you see four games highlighted in red, which means I have TCU going eight and four this year. A little bit better than what I've seen most people have TCU. Uh, a lot of people seen that TCU at seven and five, six and six, somewhere around there. There have been a couple places where I've seen TCU do nine and three or eight and four. I think eight and four is about right, uh, especially when you look at who they have to play on the road in the Big 12. Oklahoma, Iowa State on the road. I don't see them pulling those two games out. And then I see at minimum they lose one more game somewhere down the stretch. Maybe it's uh, Texas, West Virginia, Oklahoma State. I see them dropping at least one of those games. So their best case scenario, in my opinion, is nine and three for the TCU Horn Frogs. Double digits might be a little bit of a stretch in my mind. Uh, we'll, we'll see, though, if they can get there. And that floor for me is five and seven. If things don't work out, Max Dugan, the offense doesn't play well like they did last year. And the defense is, uh, you know, still trying to find places late in the season. TCU could not make a bowl game this year. I see that as the absolute floor, though, for TCU. I do think for you Horn Frog fans, you are going back to a bowl game. And that's going to do it for my TCU preview prediction for the 2021 college football season. So if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, share the video as well. You can leave a comment down below again, telling me what you think TCU is going to do in 2021. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at the team from the ACC. It's the Boston College Golden Eagles. And that's a team that I also really like this year. So how do I think they fare in 2021? Boston College is up tomorrow. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I will see all of you guys tomorrow when we talk about Boston College. Goodbye.